Welcome to today. today's edition of Daily Wisdom from Bhagavad Gita. As we continue our journey uh, on chapter 4. So, a very warm welcome to all of you. And let's get Chandruji. Thank you for turning on your video, Anapunaji. And I see Sakhi duo joining together. That's very nice. So, let me start sharing my screen and we will get underway. Um, with another engaging session that I'm looking forward to. So let me share my screen and then we'll get started. Are you able to see my screen? Yes, Nitinji. Wonderful. Okay, so like we are always do, we will invoke the blessings of God and Guru and get started. Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshwarha, Guru Sakshat Parabrahma, Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha, Vasudeva Sutam Devam, Kamsa Chanura Mardanam, Devaki Paramanandam, Krishnam Vande Jagat Gurum, Krishnam Vande Jagat Gurum. All right. So, Radhe Radhe, good morning, good evening to all of you once again. So we have been uh, talking about, uh, you know, Lord Krishna, he said in the previous shloka, we discussed that uh, he provided this knowledge to sun god, Vivaswan to begin with, right? So it's not the first time that he's reciting this knowledge 5,000 years back when he took on an avatar, but this knowledge is provided uh, right from the beginning of the creation because uh, this knowledge is the manual for life, right? The product called human life is fairly complex. And if we use this product without knowing the manual, then we do it at our own risk. And uh, it has been pretty risky proposition all along because the price tag of playing along without adhering to the manual is keeping on repeating here. Okay. So today we will continue on that and uh, see, uh, you know, go a little deeper uh, into the next shloka, which is in continuity with the shloka that we discussed previously. So I'm going to recite it and then you're welcome to follow along. It's uh, chapter 4, verse 2. Evam param para praptam Imam rajar shayo viduhu Sakale neha mahata Yogo nashta parantapa. All right, I see a few hands. Let's take our participants. Radhe Radhe Preeti Ji, please go ahead. Radhe Preeti Ji. Radhe Radhe everyone. Evam param para praptim. Imam rajar shayo vituhu. Sakale neha mahata. Yoko Nashtaf Parantapa Radhe Radhe. Very nice, Preeti Ji. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe Rupa Ji, please go ahead. Uh, Radhe Radhe, everyone. Evam Param Para Praptim Imam Raja Shayo Vituhu Prakale Neha Mahata Yoga Nashtaf very nice, thank you. Evam param para praptam, Imam raja shayo viduhu, Sakale neha mahata. Very nice. Looks like you guys have practiced together. Good going. All right. Let's pick up the remaining hands. 
राधे राधे दिनेश जी प्लीज बोल राधे दिनेश जी राधे राधे एवं परम परा प्राप्तम इमं राजर्षयो विदुहु सकाले नेह महता योगो नष्ट परंतप वेरी नाइस दिनेश जी राधे राधे ओके विल पिक अप रिमेनिंग फोर हैंड्स लेट्स फ्रीज इट एट फोर राधे राधे चंद्र जी प्लीज गो राधे चंद्र जी मीटर विल कम बैक ऑन ट्रैक सो Very nice, thank you. Okay, let's take. Uh, Radhe Radhe Shri Ramya. Evam param para pratham, imam rajal chayo vidhu sakale ne hamata yogo nashta paranta pa. All right, very nice, Shri Ramya. Okay, let's take maybe three more hands. Radhe Radhe Pragi Ji, please go ahead. Yeah, Radhe Radhe, thank you. Evam param para pratham, imam raj arshayo vidhu sakale ne mehta yogo nashta paranta pa. Very nice. Thank you, Pragi. Okay, last three hands. We'll freeze it now at three. Radhe Radhe Riya Ji, please go ahead. Radhe Radhe Riya Ji. Radhe Radhe. Evam param para praptam. Evam raja shayu viduhu. Sakale ne hamata. Yogo nashta paranta pa. Well, very nice, Riya ji. All right, last two hands. Radhe Radhe Ramesh ji. Yeah, Radhe Radhe. Evam param para praptam. Imam rajarsha yo viduhu sakale ne samasta yogo nashta paranta pa. Very nice, Ramesh ji. Radhe Radhe. Okay, last but not the least, Uday ji. Radhe Radhe. Imam param para praptam. Imam rajasayo viduhu sakale neha mahata yogo nashta paranta pa. Radhe Radhe. Wonderful. Thank you, Uday ji. So let's continue then. Uh, in the previous shloka, Lord Krishna explained that this knowledge was spoken to. Vivaswan and Vivaswan is not none other than our sun god. And then from Vivaswan it came to um, Manu, and then Manu to Ikshwaku, and Ikshwaku is you know the one uh, he was basically from the same lineage as Lord Rama. So the point that Lord Krishna was trying to make it was that the knowledge that I am imparting to you, Arjun. don't think that this knowledge i am imparting for the first time to motivate you to fight the battle there is a big bigger scope than just you know uh, motivate you to fight the battle and this knowledge was spoken is not is being respoken right now because that knowledge has always existed it was spoken to the sun god to begin with and why did he pick up vivaswan sun god because he is the ruler of the planet all the planetary system that we had so if this question comes up you know the bhagavad gita has existed only for 5000 years what before that no this knowledge has always been existed and furthermore in this shloka is going to say he's telling that how does this knowledge come about he's saying that this knowledge the it comes you know it is imparted to all the saintly kings and sages along the way as we will see and thus this uh, science of yoga now he's calling it as let's see the these uh, words we need to pay close attention to that bhagavad gita is called 
साइंस ऑफ योग इट इज कॉल्ड योग शास्त्र योग शास्त्र दैट मीन्स इट हैज टू एस्पेक्ट टू इट वन इट इज ब्रह्म विद्या ब्रह्म विद्या मीन्स नॉलेज अबाउट गॉड एंड सेकेंडली इट्स अ Uh, you know yoga shast basically um, not only brahm and there is a practical implementation implementation what do you need to do on a day to day basis it talks about both so brahma vidya plus yoga shastra both it is and then he says it is a continuous tradition continuous tradition how is it maintained it is maintained through a uh, shruti praman you pass it through an oral tradition and they are not ordinary people they are people who will listen it once and it will get embedded not only from a theoretical standpoint but they understand the import of it as well and that is how it continues to gets passed on from tradition to tradition however as we will see we will see that um this chain long passage of time it gets lost to the world as well okay there is a transmission loss that happens there are humans that come into the play even now um uh, when you so know a lot of people they are talking about bhagavad gita they are adding their own interpretations to it some reduce it to metaphors alone and all those kind of things happen and when that chain is broken the message is diluted or the true import is lost then god has his ways to reestablish it now he could do it either by taking on an avatar himself if it coincides during his avatar kal like he picked up that occasion with arjun or he may do it through a saint or a sage he knows how to do that because if this matrix that we are in right now we were here and true knowledge how to how to basically break this matrix was not there we would have cried foul said this is very unfair now we don't have a knowledge we don't have a guru how do we get out of it i mean what kind of a creation is it so god says no i'll make sure you will have sufficient masters and i'll make sure you have the right knowledge available all the times okay you should basically show the interest and then the flood gates will open up and i will lead you to a guru and the right knowledge um it's just a matter of time that is how it works yes shri ramya you had a question uh radhe radhe yes i was asking that even after finding the guru and even after knowing if we are still not able to follow then it is our chair misfortune right i don't know what happened uh, am i audible radhe yes, radhe yeah 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 i was i was asking that uh, even after listening to the right knowledge and even after finding that master but if we are not able to follow because of our mind or something then it's just a sheer misfortune is it yeah rightly said in fact this is not the first time we are having this access there is a pretty good possibility that we have had access to this knowledge in our previous lifetimes as well i don't know the depth might have varied but uh, there is a good possibility we have had access to this knowledge in the past and also has had a guru but our buddhi devi does not let us believe in it completely and though that is what we need to work upon uh, with more intensity so yes we'll come back to that shiram eh? but yeah good question uh, it's not for the first time it's happening it's it's just that we need to clear out the cobwebs emanating from our own buddhi which result in us repeating in this world because we jante to hai par mante nahi right there's a difference between knowing and believing and that gap has to be bridged with firm faith uh, and of course simply and practical implementation to see the results as well right so okay let's move on so this is what we are going to talk about now we are because in chapter 4 um we are transitioning over from chapter 3 to chapter 4 what is the connection between these two chapters what we're going to talk about okay we'll try to look at it and as we continue so let's get started so there's a link of course because lord krishna being a perfect teacher he goes he's going very systematically and very logically okay so if you're following along we'll we'll, we'll do a quick uh, i i'm going to tell you basically how um this will going to get established so from one verse 1 to 110 we are going to talk about in chapter 4 we are going to talk about the position of lord krishna himself it's going to talk about what is the knowledge his position who he is right as he started off by saying basically i have been giving this knowledge uh, right from time eternity not for the first time here so chapter 4 road map is going to be like this here 
Verse in 11 to 24, it's the application of knowledge. We're going to talk about how to apply this transcendental knowledge practically. Then verse 25 to 34 is going to talk about sacrifices and how to get this knowledge through the course of some degree or sacrifices that are to be made to get this knowledge. And then 35 to 42, the transcendental knowledge benefits, glories of transcendental knowledge. What is in it for me? Why should we hear this knowledge? So this is how we are going to cover. Past is how you can remember this acronym Okay, as we go through this chapter. So... Now, what is the connection between these chapters? Right, There has to be some kind of logical. Now, chapter 3, if you look at it, it ended with Krishna telling Arjun that if you nourish your buddhi or intellect, then you can conquer the lust. Remember, we spent a good amount of time on that. The buddhi yoga aspect of it, you arm it with the right knowledge and that's how you, um, you know, dispel the lust. And lust is not just limited to the sensual desires. Lust is not basically uh, desiring the world or worldly objects. Any sensual, sensual pursuits that we go through any of our senses is basically lust. And uh, we also spoke, it is it is so powerful. It is why it is powerful because it is a perverted reflection, distorted reflection of divine love. And that gets transformed into e something equally potent, but in a different direction altogether. That is why it is so powerful. Okay. Yes, Rahul? And Nitinji, there is a request that if you can show the previous slide, I think you went super fast there. We were not able to catch it. Fast. That was purely intentional. No worries. Okay, no worries. You can take a look at it. So this is going to be the roadmap on chapter four. Um, you can hold me accountable if you say, you know what, this is not meeting what you showed on the first slide, but then you'll have to keep referring to this slide as we go through this chapter. Okay, I hope I gave you enough time to take a screenshot if that's what you're planning to do. Now let's move on. So chapter 3, I said that is where it ended. right? Lord Krishna talking about buddhi yoga, arming our intellect with the right knowledge. Now in chapter 4, now what to nourish our intellect with? Okay, He spoke about, you know, use your buddhi yoga and that is how, that's the only way you can stamp out lust because he explained the hierarchy. You know, senses, the boss of senses is mind, the boss of mind is intellect and the boss of intellect is the real you. Okay, But it, he said that arm your intellect with the right knowledge. Now, what, what do you need to nourish it with is what we are going to talk about in chapter 4. An answer is transcendental knowledge and this is what we will continue to talk about during chapter 4. Okay, First of all, let's understand we need to exercise our intellect because we have that power. We spoke about it in our previous chapter can always overpower our mind. You wake up on a Monday morning, even though you may not feel like working, but your intellect tells you, you have to do that. Right? Anger also flows top down. Why? Because your intellect knows you. if you do it bottom up, something bad will happen. Rarely people do scream back at their bosses. It always flows top down. Boss screams at the employee, employee screams at his wife, wife screams at the kid, kid does it at the pet. And poor pet, I don't know who, who does it scream at. So it may end up biting the neighbor. So maybe that's how it goes. So uh, this is how it goes. And this is where we are going to talk about what to nourish our intellect with. Okay. So this is the connection. And this is the connection between these two chapters. Now, descending process. We'll quickly talk about it. Descending process of knowledge is top down is how... Uh, this knowledge is getting imparted. Okay? You look master to disciple and in cases of sages, it just keeps on getting trans, uh, transmitted from one sage to another. Okay, and it's a pretty, um, that's the most perfect way of getting a knowledge. We have spoken about three kind of pramans. Um, pratyaksh praman, very limiting. Right? Like, for example, um, uh, we see, uh, you know, you things may seem distorted because our senses are limited. Right? The principle of refraction, if you put your stick or even a finger inside the water, the way refraction works is it will seem bent. Because is your finger bent? Of course it is not. Why? Because your senses are deceiving you. So Pratyaksh Praman is not perfect. Then we have Anuman Praman where we in, in, infer something. Like, for example, you might be seeing light out, but you're not seeing sun. But you know sun is there, but behind the clouds. It is better than Pratyaksh Praman, but still not perfect because smoke might be emanating from a mountain and you may 
take it as a mist, but actually it could be fire. So the most perfect praman in this case is Shabd praman, the oral tradition, right? Even testimonial evidence we rely upon. We go to Yelp and say what our friends are talking about this restaurant or this latest gadget. And if you you have a sufficient reason to believe that, uh, you know, what they're saying, I should believe. And then you go with that. So testimonial evidence is the strongest one. In this case, this testimonial evidence is not coming from any ordinary people. It's coming from sages and saints, okay? That is why this knowledge is very, very powerful and directly we can tap into. So this knowledge descending process, uh, this is how it goes. And these people, sages are not ordinary people. They are realized saints. They are God-realized saints. And in this tradition, kings like Nimi and Janak understood the science of yoga and it starts from God himself, who is the first guru of the world. We do that prayer every session. Krishnam Vande Jagat Guru is the original guru of the world. And it is done through Shruti Praman or Shabd Praman. Okay, so the bona fide source through oral tradition, Vedas, Upanishads, Brahma Sutra, Bhagavad Gita, they are the perfect source of knowledge without any limitations whatsoever. Okay, now let's move on. Um, all right, so, so it, Bhagavatam also says, what it says is, God revealed his knowledge at the beginning of creation in the heart of the first born Brahma. And the tradition continued from him. So when the Brahma comes out from the navel of uh, Lord Vishnu, right, Dutya Purush, then the, all he can hear is sound, tapa, tapa, tapa. Okay, and then he performs devotion and then God plants the knowledge in his heart. And through that knowledge, he goes about doing the creation. So this is the knowledge and then the God gives him the perfect knowledge at that point. Because Bhammaji's job is pretty um, intense, right? So he needs the perfect knowledge for that. And that is how the tradition starts. And in this verse, last verse, he also revealed this knowledge to the sun god Vivaswan, from whom the tradition continued as well. Now let's move on. Um, now what happens, right? Yeah. What happens is over a period of time, the same knowledge, it starts get materially minded and insincere disciples interpret the teachings according to their blemished perspectives. This starts happening. Okay. Even in today's world, I come across so many um, commentaries and interpretations of Bhagavad Gita and it seems like, you know, they can, they should, should never be doing it. If we don't understand it, um, it's better to stay quiet than give a translation or an interpretation that that uh, that can mislead people. So you're not only accruing bad karma for self, but also misleading people. That is like the worst thing one can do. So people do that. Okay. Now, this is not an ordinary book where you start putting in your interpretations around it. Okay. If you do that, the risk is that uh, you may trivialize it, first of all, by reducing it to metaphors only. And secondly, it may mislead other people as well. Now, if you put it with the caveats, that is fine. But if you do it as a, you state it as a fact, then it is a problem. If you put a caveat, it is my opinion or it is my limited understanding. I'm trying to give it a shot. Then at least that caveat is there. But if you are giving it as a fact, then it becomes very, uh, It's you're not doing a favor to the God, right? You are actually playing around with this message. So uh, these blemished perspectives can actually distort the message. And that is what Lord Krishna is saying. So. What is, what is that that can happen? So our scriptures say humans, the knowledge from humans, when humans get involved, they have four defects. What are those four defects? Let's talk about those. The first one is called Karna Patwa, limited senses or lack of experience. Right? They are not God-realized yet. So their experience will always be limited. Like for example, Higgs boson must be assumed to exist based on estimation. Nobody has seen that. So they will do some guesswork, some speculation, um, because that's the best they can do, right? Humans as humans. The second one is Brahm, illusion. Right? Mirage of body as self, object of sense will give us happiness. So these kind of things start happening as well, where um, we are under the siege of illusion. And this illusion will be completely dispelled only when we become God-realized. It's a very simple principle. 
only when you become godlized you become godlike you don't become god you become godlike and only when you become godlike you'll have perfect knowledge and until you don't have perfect knowledge you can't even interpret god's message message perfectly okay so it's a very simple principle only a godlized saint when they put down you know what is there that is a knowledge that has to that can be completely relied upon without any doubts whatsoever if it is coming from it might be coming from a great scholar okay like i know presidents radha krishna and all i don't know if he is a saint or not but then if somebody is who's a scholarly personality who has interpreted this okay so with due respect of course he they are scholarly but if they are not god realized that interpretation will still not be perfect it will be limited we will be limiting ourselves we will be capping it with their limit uh, the 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 limitation of that their intellect and there is always a risk that you know that uh, uh, part of that delusion that the perfect knowledge that they don't have may may play into some of the fundamentals understanding around it as well okay so that is the another thing the third is pramad the mistakes that can happen of course when you are not perfect the the errors are likely to happen like right? to errors human humans we say right to errors human and human is human end of the day they will make mistakes dispensing medicines even computer programs we introduce so many bug bugs and similarly um, you know, when we write stuff we are prone to making errors there and the fourth one is called vipralipsa propensity to cheat as well in order to prove your point you start putting in arguments and other things just to just so that you can drive home the point in the way you understand and then you those things for prestige we do and then a lot of examples are there right like howard study fat is bad theory of evolution and okay theory of evolution is controversial anyways but yeah howard for so many years the they were shaping the opinion of people that um, fat is bad why because um, uh, the sugar industry had paid them for that and if you if you speak to any of the doctors on oncologist they would tell you the 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 leading cause for cancer is sugar and if we can give up sugar especially refined sugar uh, that's the best gift we can give to our body but the point here is that uh, the propensity to cheat there is well so humans they are prone to all these four errors karnapatwa bhram pramad and vipralipsa uh, so when we so because of this what happens is this because this knowledge is there shlokas are there now the same shloka somebody will pick up and start putting in their own interpretation around it you know whatever sanskrit they have learned whatever scripture they have gone through they might have read 1000 books big deal our, our scriptures are tons and tons of literature is there so they might have got an access so they may have lot of good reading ability intellectual ability now they start putting in their own inter- interpretation can they get off rid of all the four defects they cannot unless they are become godlike they cannot it's very simple so the saints are the ones that you can reliably go after because they will give you verbatim the true import of that knowledge and even the chitta shakti of god like we said that bhagavad gita is not an ordinary scripture okay when you read that you should feel something you know bhagavad gita we are reading because god has put his chitta shakti into it and when god has put his chitta shakti into it with our static buddhi i mean of course dynamic buddhi it still doesn't have chitta shakti in it until you have become godlized so for you to analyze chitta shakti of god you have to have chitta shakti of god yourself that is a very simple principle and if you don't have that it will be subject to these four four flaws and because of these four flaws this is what happens you see this within a few generations what is happening the knowledge keeps on diminishing okay diminished and when it diminishes the pristine purity is contaminated and that's when and that's when the knowledge is lost and when the knowledge is lost then god says okay it's about time my intervention is needed and how does he intervene he intervenes by reestablishing the chain okay he could he could do it by his own through his own dissension or during his avatar kal or he could send a sage avatar kal for a sage is due okay he will simply say okay now um, you know from let's let's go out and help out people and lot of sages from time to time come right we'll talk about those as well a little bit so that is how he establishes it now if you look at it he may do so by descending himself in the world as you see or 
because of his causeless grace, he establishes this tradition or he can do it through a sage who becomes a conduit for God's work on earth. So sages, when they come, they are simply an instrument of God at that point. Now, if you look at some of the sages who have descended, Shankaracharya, you know, 2000, and then Ramanujacharya, Nambarkacharya, Madhvacharya, and more recently, Kripalaji Maharaj, right? They are all the sages and saints who have descended periodically to re-establish the message of God. Now, they may do so uh, based on the Desh, Kal, Patra and all that stuff, which is, it, it's a function of space, the time that you are, not the space I'm saying, the time Kal you are in, uh, the audience that you are addressing. So it's a function of that, the message they end up imparting. God is very strategic in that sense as well. He's not going to make it disruptive for us. So he will see where the message is and simply keep on building upon it until the complete message is re-established, right? If you look at after Buddhism, where Vedas were discarded, he had Jagat Guru Shankaracharya who came. And Jagat Guru Shankaracharya is none other than Shankar Bhagwan himself. And in Padma Puran, Lord Krishna had told God, Lord Shankar, it's written there, go and establish this, but keep them bahirmukh. You know, don't introduce me as yet because that will be too much, right? From uh, from no Vedas to, you know, Sagun Sakar Bhakti, of course, that's a huge quantum leap. So he said, introduce the formless aspect. He introduced the formless, right? He himself said, okay. And then from there on, the, you know, then Ramanujachare came and he introduced the conditional Dwait, Vishishta Dwait. And then Dwait Advait came and then Dwait Vad and then Jagat Guru Kripaluji said, okay, enough of this. Now you are started fighting in Sampradayas. Let me reconcile it for you because everybody was saying the right thing. So it's like you picked up one aspect of the elephant and said, that is the absolute truth. Let me explain you the entire elephant. Okay. And that five blind men and story you might have heard about. So he reconciled it. He said, everybody was right. And that is how he explained each philosophy by reconciling it beautifully. So one of the uh, titles that he got was Samanvyacharya, Nikhila Darshan. Samanvyacharya means who reconciled all the philosophies of all the previous Jagat Gurus without any apparent contradiction whatsoever in front of 500 scholars from Kashi. Okay. So this is how God comes and keeps on re-establishing the pure and the pristine mes message. So, Prepaluji Maharaj, and we are fortunate enough to be uh, having his senior disciple, Swamiji, our beloved Swamiji as our mentor, okay, a real life mentor. So, you can pinch yourself. It's a huge luck that we are having and because of him, we are sitting here today. So, we have access to the best, the most sophisticated knowledge presented to us in the most simplified manner on this planet. Okay, if you have, any of you have had been experimenting with spirituality, you'd be able to appreciate the message that you hear, the knowledge that you hear. It's like mind-blowing. Okay, you cannot find anything more structured, logical, presented in a manner that will just stick. So we are very fortunate out of seven and a half billion people on this earth, I must tell you that. And uh, it's part of God's design only. That he makes sure that people... Um, you know, they get picked up from time to time or based on their past sanskars, they get access to this knowledge. And we are lucky that we are getting, uh, you know, access to this most pristine knowledge. Um, and and uh, the fact that we are able to discuss it every day, it's, it's, it's a huge privilege actually from that sense. So um, now what we read is this book that we read referred to is the Bhagavad Gita Song of God by Swamiji. And you know what, Swamiji, when he wrote his book, I, I was, he was, you know, he used to come to Phoenix those days. And then uh, one of the days he said, I'm writing Bhagavad Gita. And then we saw one of the Facebook posts where Maharajji had put on his glasses and he was checking like a teacher checks a student's book. He actually got it reviewed by him. Of course, he would have tried. He wrote it through his inspiration only. And then Maharajji was checking like and approved. So this knowledge basically is coming to us, which has been vetted and approved and stamped by Jagat Guru Tam. Okay. So what we discuss in this class, don't think I'm bringing anything. Okay, I have, first of all, I don't even have the eligibility to talk about this, but uh, because of Swamiji, we've gotten this uh, uh, privilege to do that. So everything that comes, every example, 
and most of the jokes as well. Okay, few jokes I may add of my own, but everything is coming from Swamiji and Maharajji only. Okay, that is how it this goes. So this knowledge is unadulterated, as it is coming from Maharajji and Swamiji. All things, including the analogies and examples. Okay, I just want to make sure you uh, get that. So um, now, what should be through? basically now? The question that I wanted to pose for today's discussion was, what should be the selection criteria to pick a translation that is truly beneficial? Because this is one of the most translated books that we have. Okay, so there is a bit of a filtering we need to apply around that. And I wanted to open it up for a few questions that you may have and then continue with this discussion and a few more things as well. Okay, I'll talk about any questions so far because I, I know I've been talking a lot. Somebody has to raise a hand and then everybody else will raise. I know this is how it works. Who's going to be that somebody? By the way, I got a privilege to meet. I'm going to stop share and show you something. And you have to guess who are those two people, okay? Yes, uh, Preeti ji, in the meantime, please go ahead. I'm going to stop share and share back again, but please go ahead, Preeti ji. Uh, okay, so what should be the criteria? I have tried reading the commentary of Bhagavad Gita for quite a few years. With no success. I mean, I would fall. I never had the bandwidth. I started feeling. Until I got one from our Swamiji, I realized that it was just the imposter syndrome. I do understand. So <laughs> that was one thing. I mean, no offense, but Swamiji's commentary just flows. It just flows and now so much so that I just open any page, any verse and that becomes my journal prompt for the day. So Nitinji, huge thank you. <laughs> huge thank you to your class also because I, I still claim I do not have bandwidth to understand the duality still exist. But the gray patch is becoming smaller. So the criterion to choose the commentary, I would say is what I would understand would be the best one. What I can relate to should be the best one. And yes, I, I do believe in having logically things when they come logically, I do believe in them. So these are a few criteria I would like to put. Radhe, Radhe. Thank you, Preeti ji. I think you articulated it perfectly right you hit the nail on the head i think einstein had said this that if you cannot explain it simply enough you have not understood it well enough and this commentary no matter which page you pick up it just flows you know it's it's almost like swamiji has decoded our minds and know where it can get stuck and has just simplified it for us and i feel lucky in the sense that he's already simplified it and I'm able to present it visually. So there are so many things he has written and there are so many things he talks about. But when you put it in visual, you are able to appreciate it even more. You know, it's like, wow, how beautifully, how simply he has explained it to us, right? And uh, it, it's it's mind-blowing. And I'm, I'm glad you are able to, you know, appreciate it as you go through that. And uh, when you write it yourself, you'll understand how easy he has made it for us. Otherwise, you have to put in your own brain around that and say, okay, maybe I got it right, maybe I not. But in this case, the commentary has simplified it for us so much. And uh, we are so fortunate. Three, understanding Bhagavad Gita or saying I read Bhagavad Gita is a fad in India. Okay, I, I come across so many people, they come across and say, and if you ask them even the one verse, and then, of course, they are not so. But then if you truly read it, I'm telling you within a matter of no time, you will start getting conversant and familiar with all the principles with absolute clarity and conviction. And of course, faith is a natural consequence of it. Thank you so much, Preeti ji, for a beautiful testimonial around it. I think we can use it as a Bhagavad Gita testimonial as well. So thank you for sharing that. I want to share something real quick and then we'll pick up hands. Uh, four hands are there. Let me show you. And no prizes for guessing whom, whom are you going to see on your screen. So do you remember? One face you can remember, probably find out, and other one you will not be able to. Okay, I'll I'll introduce her, and we would have her come on camera more often 
and do some presentations as well. If you are there, that is Rajita Ji. So I had the pleasure and the privilege of meeting both of them yesterday in Delhi. Um, Shyamji was a very gracious host. He fed me so much that I haven't felt hungry till uh, even after 24 hours. And then Rajita Ji came along as well. So thank you, Rajita Ji. It was so sweet of you, both of you. Just wanted to share that with you. Uh, if you are there, Rajita Ji, you can talk. Okay, we need to hear more often from you. Rajita Ji, I see you unmuted. We can unmute you. Um, you wanted to say something? She has made her debut on screen today, okay? And we would love to hear more often from you, Rajita Ji. Radhe, Radhe. Thank you. Radhe, Radhe. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. It was a wonderful experience. Thank you. God bless. <laughs> Privilege. Thank you. Yes, Shyamji, you wanted to say something. And then we have three more hands. Yes, Shyamji, go ahead. So much for the honor. Yeah, bye, God. And we had a <laughs> good time there. Thank you. You could take out some time. And Rajita ji also came along. Thank you so much for the camera, Rajita ji. That's it. Thank you so much for coming over. That's it. Feel so honored and privileged. Radhe, Radhe. Loved it. Yeah. It was a pleasure meeting you, Shyamji. Um, uh, so we did a trip together with Shyamji. He took us to Banke Bihari and then he he basically, uh, we had a good time yesterday as well. So always a pleasure meeting you, Shyamji. Yes, now let's go to Sandhya. You guys had raised hand and then we have three more hands. You wanted to ask something or share something? Yeah, the question that you asked about Bhagavad Gita, uh, how to kind of identify which translation to read. So I had not read any translation before starting to, I mean, before attending these classes. But yes, I had tried attending some other classes. And uh, like this point that was discussed earlier, one needs to move from understanding to understanding rather than moving from doubt to doubt. So previously, through all my experience, I think I was just moving from doubt to doubt. But this was the first time with the first class itself, I started understanding, oh my God, Bhagavad Gita offers this. Like, you know, very, very fundamental concepts. So thanks to you what? for that. Yeah. And Swamiji, of course, and Maharaji. <laughs> Yes, that's it. Yes, yes, yes. We are very, very lucky. I'm telling you, very lucky to be reading Bhagavad Gita and understanding it thanks to Maharaj and Swamiji. It's not a something which we, which can be understood so easily, I'm telling you. I have tried it in the past. I could not go past 30 pages. Okay, that too with so many doubts and, you know, all the question marks here. But after Swamiji's commentary, it is like, wow, everything just falls in place perfectly well. Great. Yes, uh, let's move on to, yes, you wanted to say Rahul, uh, Pallavi ji, Pallavi ji, let's say, and then we'll come to Rahul and then Tarun ji. Uh, Radhe Radhe, Pallavi ji. Radhe Radhe, Rahul ji, Radhe Radhe, uh, Nitin ji and everyone. Uh, sorry, I am uh, unable to keep, keep the video on right now. No worries. Um, when we are talking about Bhagavad Gita, uh, the song written by Swami ji, I must say that I tried reading Bhagavad Gita before as well in Hindi, in English by various prominent gurus and writers. Just not sitting in my head as you were saying, Nitinji, after 10 pages, 30 pages, I just ended up with lots more and more of questions and more getting confused and not understanding a bit of it. But when I started reading Bhagavad Gita, uh, commentary by Swamiji, everything started falling in place as if I started understanding verse by verse, meaning by meaning. And it was as if I agree with Preetiji also. At times it happens when I uh, read the verse of that day and it sticks in my mind throughout the day. That kind of magically the translation has been done that is how it has been explained, how deep meaning, and especially the examples that Swamiji has given, the stories, the examples, that stays throughout the day. And many times it happened that each verse, uh, especially I started st studying Bhagavad Gita by signing up on each verse a day. And that started creating a magic. And definitely, um, thanks to you for 
are really passing on this knowledge such beautifully to all of us. We are such blessed souls. I feel that uh, we all we all are very very privileged to uh, be in this class and to read the book. And this is always yeah. my always always uh, the go to book. Thank you. Very true. Beautifully summer summed up, Pallavi ji. I think we'll get a lot of good testimonials for Swami ji's Bhagavad Gita today. Thank you for sharing that. Yes, that's that's true. Um, you just have to come, you know, read a couple of translations. You'll understand the the clarity and the conviction and and the you know the scriptural references and the enrich enrichment that you experience when you go through this translation. All right. Um, who's next, Rahul? I'll uh, let you. Radhe Radhe Tarunji. Radhe Radhe Tarunji. Radhe Radhe Nitinji. Uh, so uh, I have a question uh, regarding the the commentary. As I, I'll explain my experience that how I get uh, to this platform. I started basically following uh, it uh, Scone. I started following the Bhagavad Gita there and uh, also went through some some classes. And then somehow while uh, going through on the online platform, I just have come out stuck to the uh, to this uh, JKO website and that's how I got connected. Uh, so now, now my question is, uh, uh, they also uh, claimed their version that it is as it is without any adulteration. And uh, at time I also found quite quite uh, uh, similarities uh, in, in their uh, commentary or in their teaching. Just one thing I, uh, uh, I can say I found a bit... Uh, more uh, catching me to to this session and to Kripaluji, I also started uh, watching some of their session and bhakti. Their their way of uh, attaching to the god or maybe yeah, just loving to the god is 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 more uh, connected as a human being. That is one difference. But uh, uh, my question is uh, on the commentary, as they also claimed yeah. it it quite quite forcefully as it is version. Well in their <laughs> title, it's as it is. Yeah, that's my question. What, what your question? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So I'm, I'm not saying that, you know, the version is not correct or anything, okay? Uh, of course, uh, Srila Prabhupada Ji is uh, one of the saintly personalities there, right? All I'm saying is you go through both and see which one you are able to connect to uh, more, right? And there's a there's a slight, I mean, even the, from a path standpoint, it is Krishna consciousness only, right? On, but the difference, as I see, even I started with Scorn, is it's all the same, right? You do the Krishna Bhakti and everything is same. The slight difference there is not a difference, I would say. It's the depth part of it, where it is it is restricted to Vaidhi Bhakti, rule-based Bhakti, um, more around that ritualistic part of it, and do this, increase the rounds and stuff like that. And here it is Raganuga Bhakti, more love-based. So... That is the fundamental difference around how you approach that. Although both are same, it's Krishna Bhakti only. What I would say, you'd read both the translations side by side and see which one makes more, um, you know, you, you build a quick connect and get a better understanding and, and decide it for yourself. Yeah, both are modified, I would say. Great. Yes, um, I, see, I see three more hands. Yes, Rahul? Yeah, I mean, there are some comments in the chat if I can read that. Sure. Palguniji says, I have read other translations but found it very difficult to understand. But now that I have started reading Swamiji's commentary, so many aspects have become clear. And then we have Nitinji. Even by attending your classes, I have benefited. Thank you, Radha Radha. Yes, uh, thank you, Palguniji. I'm telling you, uh, I can vouch for it and put, you know, I can put my money on it. You read anything, any book that you're reading, you're welcome to do that. But just read it on the side, side by side and see, you know, there's a difference in clarity um, that comes or not. Because I've gone through this journey myself. Um, so I can talk out of experience as well. Check it out. I mean, um, but yeah, that's what I'm saying. And secondly, what I'm, I would say is you need to have a good, uh, uh, what do you call that? Uh, at least uh, that the translation that you're going to coming in from a saint or a sage not just from a scholarly person, okay? Because that can be limiting. That's the one criteria I would apply because there are a lot of scholars out there who are adding their own interpretation to it. That could be a little tricky if we start going through that, right? A lot of people reduce Bhagavad Gita to metaphors also. Uh, that is that is not the right way of going about it. 
Yes, let's let's hear from yeah. us as well. Yeah, there is another coming from Prashasti ji. She is attending the class first time. So she says it's my first Gita session today. And I am going to be a regular henceforth. Thanks for bringing Bhagavad Gita to us in such relatable sessions. If Prashasti ji, you are there, you can raise your hand and probably introduce yourself. Yeah, Prashasti ji, we'd love to hear from you. And if you can come on camera even better, please fill out the feedback tracker as well. We'll be in touch with you. Uh, and I would encourage everybody to fill out the feedback tracker if it's already posted there. But Prashasti ji, if you are there, we'd love to hear from you. And then I see a few more hands. Yes, Prashasti ji. Radhe, Radhe. Radhe, Radhe. Good to see you, Prashasti. Where are you joining us from? I'm McKinney. Oh. McKinney, you are in our neighborhood only. I live yes. in. I'm a teacher in Badmukul. I have met you a couple of times. Okay. I don't know if you remember, okay. but yeah. Yes, so, that's what I said. I've heard this name. Yeah. Good. So yeah, please be a regular. We have a wonderful family. Yeah, I didn't know about this session. Monica, she told me like day before yesterday. And she's the one who was like, you should attend. And there was no session yesterday, right? So then I yes, put an alarm and I was you? like, okay, I have to attend it and see. Yeah. See for myself. Who told you? Monica Ji. Oh, Monica Ji. Monica Ji is okay. All right. oh, yeah. That's good. I'm glad you were you were able to make it. But yeah, keep attending it and uh, it'll start growing on to you. And this is one of those routines we look forward to every day now. Ji. Thank you. Good to hear from you, Prashasti Ji. Thank you. But Champa ji, let's let's hear from Champa ji. I, I always love to we, hear from. Before we take that one last comment from Preeti ji, Nitin ji, I miss your graphs. The x and y axis things makes concepts very clear and easy to understand. Who's saying that? Preeti ji. Preeti ji. Yes. Yes, Preeti ji. I'll I'll bring in the graphs. Okay. Um, I'll bring in the graphs as needed for sure. I love to create those graphs as well. So yeah, I, I think please stay tuned on those. All right, Champaji, let's hear from Champaji then. I would like to speak about uh, Swamiji's commentary. Uh, and uh, even I've, I'm a great devotee of uh, Scone actually. I've been following it for many years. The difference I find with our Swamiji is you feel very relaxed uh, with him, you know, throughout. You are in spirituality, but you don't follow that there are strict and stringent rules. Yes. Uh, Iskorn is like a headmaster and uh, our Swamiji is like uh, there are some teachers, no, who are very loving. They come your way and push you to their way. Finally, he is bringing us to Krishna consciousness, but with absolute ease. He don't put the rules first. Actually, the rules are the same. He is actually bringing us to the same rules what Iskan is teaching, but he won't tell us these are the rules, you follow it, you know. He is actually uh, very, I should say, I should not use that word. He is very cunning like Lord Krishna, you know. He goes <laughs> to bring us all to his uh, path without, you know, in a very, ease. his methods are very, you feel it is easy, but it is not actually. But you feel relaxed and you feel like following, you know. See, like my husband is not a devotee of anybody. He's a good man, but he does not believe in all this. But with JKO, listening to Swamiji, he has nothing to say against it, you know. See, he speaks to the present generation and the so-called, uh, um, in India, we have a clause of intellectuals. They think they should not <laughs> believe in all these things, you know. He appeals to every class. That's True. what I want to say. Thank I, you, Champaji. Nothing against Iskon as such. I'm a great devotee, but I I follow both, no? But with Swamiji, I feel very, you know, relaxed and eased. And I just want to know, do we have an audio book of uh, Swamiji's uh, Bhagavad Gita? I can check it out. I think I haven't come across yeah. it. Check it out. I think that would be a great resource to have. But yeah, like Iskon as uh, Bhagavad Gita as it is, they have an audio book. Do we have it like that? I'll check. I think Swamiji is probably working on that. I'll yeah. check it out. It'll yeah. be a huge resource for sure. Yeah, yeah. 
Thank you very much. Sorry again, I always take more than necessary no, time. No, Shampani, always a pleasure to hear from you. What I will do is, in one of the sessions, I'll bring difference between Vaidhi Bhakti and Raganuga Bhakti. Okay? So, ISKCON, uh, it's Krishna consciousness. It's wonderful. That's how my journey started as well. However, when I talk to Swamiji and Maharajji, that message goes much deeper. Okay? Because it's love-based and uh, uh, it goes much deeper in that sense. So maybe in one of the sessions, I can bring in what is the difference between Vaidhi Bhakti and Raganuga Bhakti. And like uh, Champaji said, right? Uh, one, I would say it's a bit of a military kind of a bhakti. And the other one is like purely love-based bhakti. Although you will start following the military rules all by yourself, okay? <laughs> Before you realize it after a while. But um, the way you approach it is a little different. Very true. Thank you for uh, sharing that, Champaji. Okay, three more hands and then we'll go to do a little bit of a devotional segment today um, because we haven't had it. Not very long, Shamji, point noted. Maybe five can to I, ten minutes, not more than that today. Uh, can let's take the remaining hands. Maybe can I make an important announcement? Yes. Sure, sure. Important announcement. One is the risk retreat that is coming up, right? West Coast, please sign up for that. And secondly, the family camp, which is always there, but I'd let you do that, Rahul. This retreat is super important because everybody is talking about Bhagavad Gita. We are now reading about chapter 4. So, Amiji will be telling us about chapter 8. So, don't miss that opportunity. You can do that directly from your home. The online participation is also now available. So, make this Memorial Day spiritual Memorial Day. And Wonderful. And if you are attending, I would crowdsource it to you. Take notes and send it to me, okay? I'll put pictures around it. Preeti ji has already signed up for it. Please take notes, share it with me and then I will convert it into image and animations and graphs for you and present it. That will be a huge saver. Wonderful. There we go. All right. So we all can work together and collaborate together to help each other. That's how I look at it. All right. Let's, any more hands? please go ahead. Aparna ji, please. Radhe Radhe Nitin ji. Um, th this is actually the first time I'm actually immersing myself into learning Bhagavad Gita. I knew only uh, chanting, you know, just the shlokas, that too, only first chapter I never knew. But uh, it is so full of knowledge, you know, for leading your day-to-day -day life. Uh, you know, it has covered every aspect of life. You know, like controlling the senses, managing the mind, your actions, you know, without expecting any fruits and no inaction. But the shocking thing I felt was that uh, Krishna has expressed that, you know, do the work as per your inner nature and do not desire or never wish for, you know, someone else's job, which was like really surprising to me. He has gone to that extent. And uh, it's just amazing. I have no words to express actually. And your sessions, Nitinji, are very thought-provoking and, uh, you know, out of the box, those graphs and, uh, you know, animations. Appreciate your effort, actually. Thank okay. you so much. I think we lost you, Panaji, but we got it. Yes, I know. Yeah. Sorry, I'm driving. My connection may not be good. No worries. Yes, yes, yes. We are very fortunate and uh, let's make the most of it, I would say. Okay, we have this unique opportunity to take this knowledge into our DNA for eternity. And so let's put in our best foot forward on a daily basis. And thank you so much uh, for that. Okay, two more hands and then we get into our devotional segment. Okay, I'll sing one and then maybe a couple of more hands and then we'll wrap up today's session. We have, uh, then we'll start again on Monday. Okay, so I know we can just Radhe, Radhe. Uh, Radhe. Like... Uh... Uh, I read uh, Prabhupada Ji's uh, Bhagavad Gita long back. Like, uh, I got a setback in my life. Uh, I thought uh, uh, everybody is saying you'll get answers in your uh, Bhagavad Gita. You, you should read Bhagavad Gita. So I, th I started reading that. But uh, when I read that, um, I was full of questions. There was nobody to answer my queries. I could not able to understand properly. There's a lot of confusion. Um, but now when I read Swamiji's Bhagavad Gita, uh, like it's so clear and so simple. Even, even uh, uh, whoever can read the English, the kids, they can also understand. 
it's so simple and it's like spoon feeding i really love swami ji's commentary what uh, how um, swami ji narrated very well with so much uh, lovely examples and stories and making us understand uh, so so easily uh, so uh, and also uh, nitin ji you uh, bring that uh, ancient knowledge uh, what swami ji gave that in such a beautiful manner like from ancient to modern you uh, change that in uh, such a beautiful transition like with the graphs that pitch, pictures and that uh, explanation and with such a uh, powerful pace like um, this is very suitable for the uh, people who are in this age so i really appreciate and applaud and thank you for bringing us uh, this bhagavad gita in this manner uh, thank you so very much thank you i mean it, it's happening as per uh, guru's design only i guess but yeah it's my privilege and they keep giving me ideas uh, which help resonate with the audience here so i hope that continues um, but it is all guru's kripa basically which is manifesting through each one of us as we are working together on this one so thank you so much for your kind words for that uh, but yeah like i said let's make the most of this unique opportunity we all have to read it on a day to day basis seema akka laddu i'm seeing after a long time always good to see you please go ahead laddu radhe radhe bhaiya good to see you too bhaiya bhaiya i have to i have to ask you this question so bhaiya my sister is expecting and her due date is in june so now we know that soul has arrived right so uh, so the thing is uh, bhaiya i just wanted to know do, do we as in could we find out if the soul is from my brother and brother in laws and sisters or from our ancestors there's no way to know that because god see first of all the soul comes in the womb in the around fifth month or so that is oh. what i just say uh and then uh, which soul will be sent to which womb is a very fairly complex algorithm it's it's oh. not something that uh, god has given access to or we can hack that now uh, so that is typically how it goes it's not easy to know that part is there a reason you want to know that how will it make your life different um it won't matter i'm sure but i just wanted to know i don't think there's a way to know that you can ask swami ji as well there's no way to know that people do life regression and stuff like that but oh. it's a pretty complex algorithm in that sense and i think god only knows that he only has that hack not hack but it's his design only bhai so, bhai but... yeah go ahead bhai i was saying i swear i didn't have any bad intention i just wanted to know so that's no no i know that why are you thinking bad intention <laughs> i'm just saying out of curiosity as well it see it's yeah. one of the god's mercies only that he doesn't let us know because if we come to know it will complicate our life big time you see mm-hmm. if we let see some of our relations are repeating around us then it could complicate our life as well but it said it's it's a very complex algorithm and i haven't heard at least from swami ji or maharaj ji that is a way to know that because i think that's probably not needed for us to know to keep our life simple okay okay bhai but see you and good to hear you and would love to hear one of the bhajans also from you if you can stay back I will stay back here, yeah, but 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 I really really need a practice. I know okay, this okay. family never judge, but but still, okay, no I don't want no. to bug bug anyone here. So, no worries, no worries. Thank you, Vyaya Radhe Radhe. Thank you, Sima Radhe Radhe. Thank. You. Good to hear from you. See you as well. Yes, Sandhya, you had a question too. Sure. Or in in if you permit, I think now we are into the devotional segment. Yes. So officially we end our segment, and then we'll spend about five minutes or so, five or six minutes or ten minutes at best for our devotional segment, and then we'll wrap up our session um, until we meet on Sunday evening, Monday, um, Monday morning again. Yeah, Radhe Radhe Sakhi Roji. Radhe Radhe. Just wanted to first add this that. Uh, yes we are super blessed to be attending these classes and on top of that like since nitin ji arrived here in india he has been traveling every day almost even yesterday night you were traveling and then also you are ensuring that you are taking these classes 
and they are just getting better and better every day. I don't understand how, but seriously, hats off to you and thanks. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's my uh, reprieve from jet lag. Okay, when I do this session, I I'm able to beat all the fatigue, travel fatigue. Okay, if I don't do it, then I'll be sleepy. This is how it works for me. And we also want to sing a bhajan whenever. Okay, yeah. all right. It's my session, so I get to sing before you do. Okay. Sure, we would love that. Let's, <laughs> let's hear what all the hands are there for singing. Only. <laughs> Vashini, okay, Anita ji, you want to sing as well? I think by default, everybody has to sing if they have the hand raised. So. Okay, so okay, let's get the devotional segment going and I'll start with because I've been traveling around and a lot of things are getting done. So this bhajan I have to sing. Okay, so a couple of lines and then you can take over. Mera aap ki kripa se sab kaam ho raha hai mera aap ki kripa se sab kaam ho raha hai karte ho tum kanhaiya mera naam ho raha hai karte ho tum kanhaiya mera naam ho raha hai mera aap ki kripa se sab kaam ho raha hai all right over to the remaining hands now thank you so now the chat is also enabled for everyone and let's move to sakhi duo all right sakhi duo go ahead please I'll just share the screen for the lyrics so that everyone can see. Can you see the screen? Yes, we can yes. see your screen. Awesome. <laughs> Ali dil ab to mera ajab ho gaya ajab ho gaya ek nazar radhe ek nazar unko dekha gazab ho gaya a gazab ho gaya dino duniya ki daulat sanjoyi thi jo a sanjoyi thi jo a sanjoyi thi jo लुट गई पल में यार गजब हो गया हाँ गजब हो गया एक नजर राधे उनको देखा गजब हो गया हाँ गजब हो गया तन गया मन गया अगल हैरान है आज ही हैरान है आज ही हैरान है Dil फिर ना आए दोबारा गजब हो गया हाँ गजब हो गया एक नजर राधे एक नजर उनको देखा गजब हो गया हाँ गजब हो गया तर्दी दिल में मगर ऐसा पाया मजा हाँ जी पाया मजा हाँ जी पाया मजा अब कहेंगे कृपालू गजब हो गया हाँ गजब हो गया एक नजर राधे एक नजर उनको देखा गजब हो गया हाँ गजब हो गया हाली दिल अब तो मेरा अजब हो गया अजब हो गया एक नजर राधे थैंक यू Thank you. Very nice. You guys rocked it. Did you have you been practicing together? 
the citation and everything very nice yeah, loved it right once today yeah. morning before while the class yes. before the session very nice you did outstandingly well and it was uh, energy packed and bhav packed both we loved it sakhi do you rocked today awesome so 1 2 3 4 shamji 5 minutes and 4 bhajans tough but we'll try to make it yes anita ji you wanted to sing as well or who's next pail ji is also there okay so we have pail ji the ashwini ji and shiran ji uh, i i want first? yeah i want to just shall i go yeah yeah sure go sure, go ahead as today we are speaking about uh, bhagavad gita i thought of reciting one bhagavad gita shloka sure sure uh, it's from uh, chapter 12 verse 13 and 4 13 and 14 uh, it goes like atveshta sarva bhutanam maitra karunaye vacha nirmamo nirahankara samadukh sukakshami संतुष्ट सतत योगी यथात्मा दृढ़ निश्चय मैयात मनोबुद्धि यो मद्भक्त सी द मीनिंग इज दोस् डिवोटीस आर् वेरी डियर टू मी हू आर् फ्री फ्रम मैली टूवर्ड्स ऑल लिविंग बीइंग्स हू आर् फ्रेंडली एंड कंपैशनेट they are free from attachment to possessions and egotism equipped in happiness and distress and ever forgiving they are ever content steadily united with me in devotion self control of firm and a firm resolve and dedicated to me in mind and intellect thank you radhe radhe shiramya you there yes shiramya is there uh, ah yeah, yes i want to sing uh, sumiran karile mana okay yeah you can do few lines let's try to wrap it up quickly okay sumiran karile mana rakhamura ratha ramana doi doi जन जीवना राधार राधार मना ओके यू क्यों लाइन्स करें थैंक यू नो नो गो हेड शिरे नो आई एल प्रैक्टिस बेटर नेक्स्ट टाइम आई एम नॉट गेटिंग द ट्यून योर वॉइस इज़ आल्सो कटिंग ऑफ़ कटिंग दी बट कटिंग वॉइस वाज़ कटिंग ऑफ़ ओके या दिया शिरे गो हेड एम आई ऑडिबल Rabi Rabi, thank you, thank you. Um, uh, okay, so uh, today I want to uh, sing Payo Ji Maine Ram Ratan Dhan Payo. I will just uh, sing one like the sure, line sure. that I sing. Payo Ji Maine Ram Ratan Dhan Payo. Payo Ji Maine. राम रतन धन पायो वस्तु अमोलिक दे मेरे सत गुरु वस्तु अमोलिक दे मेरे सत गुरु कृपा कर अपनायो पायो के बने राम रतन धन पायो जन्म जन्म के पूंजी पाई जन्म जन्म के पूंजी पाई जग में सुख बनायो पायो जी बने राम रतन धन पायो खर चाना खोटे चोर न लूट खर चाना खोटे चोर न लूट दिन दिन कटत सभायो पायो जी मैंने राम रतन धन पायो 
सत की नाव थे वतिया सत गुरु सत की नाव थे वतिया सत गुरु भव सागर तर वायु पायु जी राम रतन धन पायु मीरा के प्रभु गिरिधर नागर मीरा के प्रभु गिरिधर नागर हरख हरख जित गायो आयु जी मैंने हरख हरख जित गायो आयु जी मैंने राम रतन धन पायु आयु जी मैंने राम रतन धन पायु थैंक यू राधे राधे थैंक यू वेरी ब्लिसफुल मेलोडियस लव इट तेयाशिनी यू गॉट अ वेरी स्वीट वॉइस ऑलवेज अ प्लेजर हियरिंग यू सो मेनी हार्ट्स फ्लोइंग इन योर वे वंडरफुल लेट्स मूव ऑन टू पायल जी देन टू रैप अप आवर डिवोशनल सेगमेंट आई एम लुकिंग फॉरवर्ड टू दैट एज़ वेल सो great job dhashini on all of you over to you pail ji all yours thank you thank you so much nitin ji and everyone radhe radhe <clears throat> okay i'll not take much time i'll just sing four lines <clears throat> वो कालायक बासुरी वाला वो कालायक बासुरी वाला सुध बिसरा गया मोरी रे सुध बिसरा गया मोरी माखन चोर वो नंद किशोर वो कर गयो मन की चोरी रे सुद बिसरा गया मोरी वो कालायक बासुरी वाला पन घट पे मोरी बैया मरोड़ी मैं बोली तो मेरी मट की पोड़ी पैया पड़ू करू बिनती मैं पर माने ना वो एक मोरी रे सुद बिसरा गया मोरी वो कालायक बासुरी वाला वो कालायक बासुरी वाला सुद बिसरा गया मोरी रे सुद बिसरा गया मोरी थैंक यू सो मच राधे राधे ब्यूटीफुल पायल जी वेरी नाइस यू ऑलवेज लीव अस ऑन अ डिवोशनल हाई ग्रेट सो विद दैट वी कम टू द एंड ऑफ टुडे सेशन एंड वी विल स्टार्ट अगेन ऑन संडे इवनिंग व्हिच इज मंडे मॉर्निंग संडे इवनिंग यूएस एंड मंडे मॉर्निंग हियर इन india so have a blessed weekend and um, i look forward to seeing you next week thank you again for a wonderful session and your enthusiastic participation like always thank you nidin don't forget swami ji's retreat this weekend see you there swami ji's retreat please do sign up for that west coast retreat and do not miss out on that opportunity so radhe radhe thank you everybody i'll see you then <laughs>